Hey guys, I'm Hurricane, and today I'm going to be looking at these two G&P gearboxes. This is the 350 feet per second version, this is the 400 foot per second version. I'm going to be disassembling them and uh, just doing a basic overview. These are pretty much brand new, I just got these in. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. One thing that is worth noting is that all the screws so far have been pretty stiff. They've been pretty uh, locked in, which is a good thing. It's better to have tight screws than to have screws that are way too loose that just vibrate out and get lost, obviously. Alright, ready to open these things up. Hold that down. Alright, here we go. So far, these things look practically identical. We have, uh, we have these spring guides. These appear to be some sort of metal. They've got a washer and a little spacer on it. So we got the washer and the spacer. Looks to be the same on the 400 feet per second version. Put that back. Take that out. Now I've heard that, yep, this kind of confirms it. This is the 350 FPS version right here in my right hand. This is the 400 FPS version in my left hand. And they just cut the springs to uh, make it a little bit different for velocity. So 400 FPS spring is just longer than the 350 FPS spring. This wiring is pleasantly thick. So it looks like you won't need to change that out unless you rewire it or put in a MOSFET. One of the things that did disappoint me immediately about these gearboxes was that when I test fired them, the, uh, the safety, semi, and full auto positions were really finicky. Um, it ended up so that being you could shoot on safe and uh, that's not a great thing. It would shoot semi-automatic on safe and semi, and then it would shoot full auto on auto, obviously. Let's take a look at these pistons here. Got some grease in there. Pretty standard G&P looking piston and piston head. Pretty much the same deal here, just a little bit less grease. Yellow grease, so it's more of an orange grease over here. Both of these gearboxes have full cylinders. And both of these gearboxes also have, uh, looks to be the same gear set. You already heard me talk about the springs and the spring guide. The gear sets look pretty much the same here. Everything else is probably the same. This appears to be aluminum for the cylinder head, single O-ring. Not quite sure. Feels like some sort of lightweight aluminum. Here we have the tappet plate. Kind of interesting. Most companies have a curve on their fins. This is straight. We have an O-ring in the air nozzle. That's a good thing. Do a basic compression test here. Compression feels pretty good, not gonna lie. The gears do appear to be somewhat shimmed, which is pleasant. They were not perfectly shimmed out of the box, I will say, but uh, a little bit better than a lot of Chinese guns that I've seen. I've heard GMP bearings are pretty sturdy as far as airsoft bearings go. But uh, if you're going to buy them aftermarket, just uh, go ahead and get some modified ceramics. I've heard, I've heard those are pretty good and outlast the GNPs. Now this is a reinforced. This is a reinforced version two. Basically, that doesn't mean too much to me. It just means I stuck extra metal in there that isn't really needed. Um, they did not uh, radius the cylinder window, which is a little disappointing. But whatever, it doesn't take that long to do yourself. One thing that I will know is that this little hole right here that your hop-up unit will slide into and that the air nozzle comes out 
it's a little tight um, on the G and G hop-up unit I had on hand for testing, so uh, presented a little bit of a problem. Not too much though, but it was incredibly snug, and you really had to work the unit to get it in there. So if you have a metal unit, metal hop-up unit, it may not fit. I'm just gonna sit these uh, gears back in here and just look at the shimming real quick. Let the gears spin. A little bit of grinding there, I hear. Like I said, not perfectly shim, but it's pretty close. These bearings do look like they need to get epoxied in place, unfortunately. But then again, you have to do that a lot with bearings and bushings, so whatever. A lot of that noise that I was hearing is the spur gear. It's lightly grating on something on this side of the box. A little basic spin test here for these bearings. Definitely better than bushings, but uh, not quite as long as some of the uh, times I've seen gears spin on YouTube. All right, a lot of the stuff here is pretty much the same. Basically, everything in the gearbox is the same as far as I'm concerned, except for the springs. Overall, I think that the FPS that these things made during the testing was pretty consistent once I got things installed relatively correctly. However, the, I don't really think these are drop-in gearboxes. You really do have to uh, tune some things in the gearbox and with the rest of the gun, like the hop-up unit and the barrel and, all that, and the bucking and all that kind of thing to make it work perfectly. I will uh, report back if I have any serious problems or uh, grievances against this series of gearbox. As far as I'm concerned, these seem like pretty decent shells. They seem like pretty decent gear sets. Um, I have heard some little things here and there about some of the GMP parts, like the pistons don't hold up that long, or the gear shafts break. I've heard different things about the gears and the gear shafts. I've heard a little bit different things about the pistons as well. But for the most part, for a stock gearbox, this isn't really all that bad, as far as I can see so far. That's pretty much it guys, hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and, and uh, comment below if you have any questions or uh, any observations that you uh, made that you think are important. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put a comment in there, I'll try to answer. Alright, thanks for watching guys.